So then you'd be like, oh, do you guys want to hang out or whatever? So then the growth of friendship is actually not, it's based on technology, not actually on face to face. The second one is the loss of family communication. So parents are actually bringing home, their, they're using their work phones as to bring home so then they have to work 24 7. They don't, you know, go to work at certain times, they bring home and they use their cell phones. So it actually limits the growth of the friendship between the child and the parent. So in conclusion, as you can see with the statistics and research done by um, on the use of cell phones, the, how, um, the consequences of how they use uh, the consequences of cell phones of how they cause issues, they play on an obstacle of youth academic obligation and can negatively affect social skills and relationships. It supports my overall claim that cell phones have a negative influence on the youth in today's society. All right, you ID the topic clearly. I think the phrasing is a little complicated on a couple of the supporting claims. There's a good preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. I think most people understand the controversy on this, so I'm not sure that there's uh, anything to worry about there. Internally, you're signposting again pretty clearly. Once again, like I said, I think sometimes the phrasing is a little convoluted, especially on point number two. On your supporting material, you've got a couple of examples here and there. Um, there's some uh, information on the first point that seems to be very conclusionary. Uh, the threat of cancers and brain cancers and those kinds of things, none of it seems to be quantified. You do cite experts that talk about some risk, risk there, but we don't have any <coughs> uh, examples that you can point to or quantification. So it, at this point, it feels very speculative, and I'm not sure how great the risk is. On the other issues, the same problem occurs. Uh, you've got some hypotheticals, especially on the third point, some hypothetical examples, but I'm not sure that they are uh, widespread or consistent. I can't say that people don't occasionally fall into the texting slang when they write in class. I just don't know how common that is and how big an impact that's going to have on their ability, for instance, to be admitted to a college or university. You've got the one example, but generalizing from that I think is a little bit pro excuse me, problematic. Now you do a nice job talking to the audience and trying to engage them and that builds some credibility. Occasionally, like I said, the language is a little awkward or convoluted and so it doesn't always flow as smoothly as it could. All right, thank you very much.